guys. I'm here at Kane to show you what's happening. Check it out. I got this feeling inside my bones. It goes electric wavy when I turn it on. Off from my city, off from my home. We're flying up no ceiling when we in our zone. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it. Moving so phenomenally. Come on, rock the way we rock it. So don't stop. Good morning. I am Ada Morell, Chair of the Kane University Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we extend all our welcome. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Ada Morell, y de parte de la Junta Directiva de Kane University, le damos a todos las bienvenidas. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce the President of Kane University, Dr. Dawood Farahi. Thank you. Thank you. The applause was like, uh, I was thinking of a reception afterwards, and that's all the energy I get. There you go. Now we're talking. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the warm introduction and for your tireless dedication to our university. It's with great pleasure that I welcome all of you to the official start of the new academic year here at Kane University. I like to recognize I can't see because the lights are kind of dim, so I have to stay with my uh, little list. From the Board of Trustees, Michael D'Agostino, Jean Enlow, Steve Fastuk, Linda Lewis, and Richard Trabert. <laughs> From the Alumni and the Foundation Board, Maria Bordas, Ed Esposito, and Jane Boziak. And from the Liberty Hall board, Mr. John Kane himself. And I also understand that Ms. Ann Estabrook, the vice chair of the Wenjo Kane University Board of Directors, and Mayor Chris Bulwidge are also here somewhere. And also Dr. Maggie McMenamin the president of the Union County College. So thank you for coming. <clears throat> and my predecessor seems to be here too, Frank Esposito. <laughs> I have the special meal for you, Frank. Chicken with no bones. <laughs> thank you again for all of you to join us and for the support you have provided this university. You know, there is a Chinese saying that says, may you live in interesting times. Some say it's a curse, some say it's a blessing, but the fact is we do live in interesting times. Right now, millions of students across the country are returning to college campuses. In addition to seeking knowledge and opportunity, they seek understanding, equality, and justice. I want to state right here my commitment 
that we will do everything we could possibly do here at King University to provide them with the best opportunity to realize their dreams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, King University is strong in our outlook for the future even more promising. There are two major elements of that strength. One is the financial stability of the institution, and the other one is the enrollment. As far as the finance of this institution is concerned, Moody's recently, on August 8, did an evaluation of Kane, and this is what they said. Kane University's A2 rating is supported by its consistently very strong operating performance, steady enrollment, and good revenue diversity. Revenue diversity supports ongoing favorable operations and insulates the university from the volatility in a single revenue stream. Kane's strategic positioning is good, supported by a management team that continues to exhibit strong fiscal stewardship with a dedicated focus on optimizing the use of resources. Pretty cool. And then there's enrollment, which is very strong. The class of 2021 is one of the largest freshman classes in the history of Kane University, 1,759. Thank you, Enrollment Services in the Academic Division for making that possible. Thousands of returning students and transfer students also join us today, and I hope you have an opportunity to walk around and see some of them. It brings the total of the incoming class for this academic year to 3,862 students. And that, and that excludes 575 freshmen that will be entering Winjo King University in a week. Today, we also welcome 90 new faculty to our King University family, and we will add another 30 full-time faculty this coming spring. And I'm very inspired by those that I met, their enthusiasm for the university, and their desire to do the best for our students. So please stand up and receive a round of applause from the King community. Thank you. I saw Josh Palge hanging around in this neighborhood. He said, where are these people going to park? <laughs> well, Josh, where are you? There you go. And he says, where are these people going to park? This summer, we acquired 14 acres across the street from the old shearing plow. And Felice has seen to it that we have 500 new parking spots ready to go. See? I don't get the applause the parking spots do. <laughs> what a country. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that this summer, King University purchased those acres, and we resolved the issues with the township and some of the other uh, entities involved. And we have plans for new faculty housing in that area and new academic buildings uh, for the next decade. I hope you took uh, a chance to look at the slideshow highlighting the achievement of our students and faculty. There's so much that I could not mention all of them in a speech lasting less than an hour. Now let me tell you a story that I said five years ago, during commencement. At commencement five years ago, we 
introduced a young man, an immigrant from the Dominican Republic, by the name of Marvin Andujar. Marvin was a young immigrant who had never set foot in a computer science class. But at Kane, he was the first one to get a National Science Foundation scholarship. But Marvin didn't stop there. He graduated with degrees in both computer science and mathematics. He then became the first alumnus of Kane University to get an NSF graduate research fellowship, and Marvin was just getting started. This week, Marvin began his new job, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Engineering in South Florida University. <clears throat> so let's do something different in Skype with Marvin. Marvin, there he is. Hello. How are you? Uh, good morning, Prince Farahi and Kent University. What? Uh, it's Thank great to be here with you today. Well, thank you for taking the time, and welcome to the opening day. Thank you. I'm uh, so, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing and what you're up to. Uh, definitely. Um, I started my uh, assistant professor position at uh, the University of South Florida here in Tampa. And I started my uh, research lab on brain-computer interfaces. So I'm currently recruiting PhD students for, my, uh, for computer science and uh, getting ready to do a new documentary for the Nikola Tesla uh, series. So pretty busy. Well, get, uh, tell us if there were any people at Kane that helped you to get where you are. Oh, definitely. Uh, That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Uh, uh, to Professor Patricia Morelli, she was a great advisor, and we still talk uh, regularly. Uh, Dean George Shang, as well, um, he was a great mentor. Also, special thanks to Wendy Alvarado. She was uh, gave me a lot of support when I was in the Magnet program. Uh, I hope I'm a great mentor to my students, just as they were great mentors to me. Thank you, Marvin, and we're really grateful that you could take the time to talk to us, and maybe when you come up north, come over yeah. here, I'll buy you lunch at Smashburger. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting me, and go Cougars. Thank you. <laughs> you see, Marvin is what happens when you dare to dream. When you combine good teaching with great advisement and incredible mentorship that he received. Years ago, we envisioned a program that would address our nation's growing demand for STEM graduates. And we envisioned a program that would give women and minorities the chance to succeed in this growing field. The dream was realized when we opened the New Jersey Center for science, technology, and mathematics. Today, we celebrate the results of that decision, and Marvin is one of them. More than 60% of the students in our STEM program are either women or minorities. And this fall, four of our STEM Graduates begin PhD programs in prestigious universities across the country. And a fifth one, based on our relationship with Drexel, is starting medical school. That's not bad, is it? When we announced our STEM plans, the prophets of gloom said we couldn't do it. They said, well, we couldn't succeed. They said, that's not the field where our students will succeed. Well, my friends, they were wrong, dead wrong. If we had listened, we would have, met Mar we would have never met Marvin, 
in hundreds of other graduates of the same program. But we knew the opportunity was knocking. We had the courage to embrace it. We knew that we could deliver a world-class education in world-class facilities with world-class faculty and programs to world-savvy students. And we did it at the most affordable, comprehensive university in the state of New Jersey. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what you experience today here at King. Our finest hours always come when we dare to dream and dream big. Years ago, we set a course in our Vision 2020, and I'm proud to tell you much of it has already been realized. <laughs> 10 years ago, we launched the Human Rights Institute building on our work with the Holocaust Resource Center. We dreamed big and recognized the opportunity to be a strong, relevant vo voice in the world effort against injustice. Let's take a look. The Human Rights Institute at Kane University was created in 2008. Its mission? To broaden the university's long-standing efforts to raise awareness of human rights issues worldwide and to develop initiatives to help eradicate these abuses and their root causes. The cornerstone of the Human Rights Institute's yearly offerings, the International Conference on Human Rights, gathers university and high school students, educators, professionals, and community members on campus to learn from and engage with experts, activists, and survivors. The goal of the conference is to inspire guests to grow from passive bystanders into active upstanders. When you decide to get off the sidelines, get off the chair, and jump into the game and try to put your footprint into the situation, the issue, the crisis that is occurring, you move from being a bystander to an upstander. You stand up in defense of people's human rights and human dignity. Since its inception, the International Conference on Human Rights has covered topics ranging from slavery and immigration to incarceration and healthcare. Each year, the Human Rights Institute welcomes dynamic speakers who share their personal experiences and lend their energizing and motivating perspectives to the proceedings. My story is not only about me, it's not only about Tere Rai. Unfortunately, it is a story that represents the reality of our world. It is a story that represents millions of individuals who are seeking opportunity for an education and failing. But it is also a story of hope, a story of achieving dreams, a story that justifies why the Institute of Human Rights at Ken University should continue to advocate for the rights and dignity of women and others. Earlier this year, a team of Gaines students worked with Mr. Pendergast on a project aimed at reducing the use of conflict minerals mined in the Congo. The students convinced our Board of Trustees to adopt a policy banning the purchase of products made with conflict minerals. They did not stop there. They're now advocating at other universities the hallways of the New Jersey legislature, and their work speaks volumes for themselves. These amazing Kane students cannot be stopped when they have an idea. <laughs> Years ago, we also aspired to become a national leader in the allied health arena, and now we call it health professions, and we knew we had the talent and the drive, and so we did embark on a plan to create qualitatively superior program to become the best in New Jersey and a model for the country. By the way, is Marty Schulman here? Marty? 
we just demolished your old office. <laughs> How many of you remember Marty's office in the campus school east? Yeah, we got rid of it. And Marty has a palace now on the east campus. We began with an ambition, plan, ambitious plan to renovate the east campus and provide our programs with the clinical space that they needed to succeed. We continued with an even bolder plan to build a world-class health professions building on the corner of North Avenue where you will have the reception. We pursued our dream, and today, King University has the finest programs in occupational therapy, in speech pathology and communication disorders, and let me say it, one of the finest in the country. Both programs received 10 times. <laughs> Both programs received 10 times the number of qualified applicants that they can accept annually. Both programs are instituting doctoral initiatives to further enhance the reputation of this university. Our speech pathology has already started, and the cohort of 11 doctoral students have started this fall, and some of them are here today. Are you? Marty? There you go. Joining them is, an our, is our new physical therapy program, which accepted its first class of doctoral students one year ago and moved into the world-class facility on North Avenue. This year, the program received an elite application pool that is three times larger than the available slots. Now, these are great accomplishments but success is best measured in real life results. And let me tell you a story that will touch your heart. This May, I had the pleasure of welcoming Yvonne Lee and her family to the greatest day of the year at King University commencement. But it was not an easy journey for Yvonne. In 2011, she was a senior preparing for graduation and looking to the future. Just weeks before commencement, Yvonne suffered a stroke and went from planning for her future to fighting for her life. She spent a year regaining the ability to move and communicate. She returned home. Then she began working with our therapist in the speech pathology program. Along the path to recovery, Yvonne realized the dream that she thought had slipped away. She completed her coursework and graduated this past May. There was many people, there were many people who helped Yvonne achieve that goal. But I would like to thank Marty Schulman, Mary Jo Santipietro, Jeannie Avido, Joy Moskowitz, and Jerry Pagoa Cruz. Thank you. <laughs> and their work recently received statewide recognition. Governor Christie signed a new law on May 1st that created the nation's first aphasia task force. And in recognition of our leadership in this field, Kane Center for Communication Disorder has been named a permanent representative to the statewide conference. <laughs> Yvonne wasn't the only noteworthy story at this year's commencement. CBS has faced the nation, the number one Sunday morning show in the country, featured a look at this year's top student commencement speakers. And guess who made the cut? Commencement season is just about wrapped up, and as we take a look at some of our favorite speeches this year, instead of focusing on the famous, we thought we'd share the fresh wisdom of the graduates themselves. They spoke the languages of the world. Friends and fellow graduates, welcome. In Arabic, ahlan o sahlan. 
or in the words of Confucius, Yo yuan fang lai, bu yi le hu. And they did it with a millennial touch. But first, let me take a selfie. <laughs> they braved the elements. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out in the rain. We usually try to forget Woo. without missing a beat. Hidden in our stories are silences that critically shape our experiences. They showed us they were listening when we thought they were just wasting their time. SpongeBob taught us love yourself and stay optimistic. Even South Park. South Park taught me to question authority, question power, dig beneath the most convenient answer. And in their enthusiasm for the lessons of life, they showed us they were actually paying attention to the important stuff too. Remember that difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. Don't worry about your failures. Worry about the chances you miss when you don't even try. Worry about the direction you fall in. Fall forward, never backwards. Cherish within your heart the love of those characteristics which will make you the best parent, partner, coworker, and friend. Don't silence those who have been silenced their whole lives. Often it's the quiet person in the corner who has the best stuff to say. And lastly, for the love of God, shut up and listen. Let courage be our defense against cowardice, hope our defense against despair, compassion our defense against destruction. The class of 2017, from Spelman College in Atlanta to Keene University in New Jersey. And Boise State University to West Point. Graduates, we salute you. And we'll be right back. <clears throat> Emily Kubelet is here tonight, today, and she is going to go to graduate school right here at Kane. Emily, are you here? Thank you. Now, you did pretty good, Emily, but some of the other kids did pretty good, too. Do you want to know what they did? Have you guys heard of Super Bowl? You haven't? It's the television's biggest advertising day, and over 110 million people watch it. And guess who is part of making the commercials that premiere during the game. Kane graduates. That's right, three different graduates of the Michael Graves College and the Robert Bush School of Design helped produce three different commercials and for three different world-class advertising agencies that premiered during the recent Super Bowl. Take a look. Best kept secret in football since. Hey, how did he get in here? And with toenail fungus. Fight it with Jubilee. Jubilee is a prescription medicine used to treat toenail fungus. Use Jubilee as instructed by your doctor. Now that's prime time. Most common side effects include ingrown toenail application site redness, itching, swelling, burning, or stinging, blisters, and pain. You ready to fight it? Ask your doctor if Jubilee is right for you. You know, I look great in purple. Get tough. I just want to tell you that I've had enough. It might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye, 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 bye. Five calories, no artificial sweeteners, and tastes amazing. Bye.
These graduates and many others from the Michael Grave College have set the bar high for future generations of Kane students, including those who will join us in China this fall. Good thing we didn't listen to naysayers on this one either. When we began our collaboration with Michael Graves, the competition tried to stop us. You probably saw that in the papers. But there is no stopping an idea whose time has come. Michael spent much of his career at Princeton, but in the last years of his life, his love for Kane grew exponentially. In fact, when asked why he would lend his name and reputation to our university, Mr. Graves said, Princeton students do not need me, Kane students do. Michael and Kane University shared a special commitment. We both wanted to bring focus to public architecture, and we wanted to take steps to diversify the field of architecture. Today, I am pleased to report to you that this fall's incoming class of 44 architecture students include 19 women, and more than half of this class is either African American or Latino. <clears throat> then there's Liberty Hall. Mr. Kane, are you here somewhere? Yep, there, right there. Many of you remember the fierce opposition to this one as well, correct? Our work continues to protect and preserve the important pieces of American history, stories that will be passed on to future generations of Americans for years to come. And with each discovery, an original letter by George Washington, never before seen documents from Alexander Hamilton's time as Secretary of the Treasury, we garnered national attention that shines a spotlight on Kane University. This summer, while restoring the wine cellar in the mansion, Liberty Hall discovered several cases of Madeira wine that date back to 1790s. Spirits that were shipped to Liberty Hall in celebration of John Adams' presidency. That's a long time ago. The discovery was reported by major news outlets like CNN and ABC, as well as a magazine as the Versus Town and Country and the Men's Journal. Take a look. Hidden in plain sight, a rare vintage vino to make any wine connoisseur salivate. It was an oh my god moment. Museum director Bill Schro walked me over to Liberty Hall at Kane University, where he made a huge discovery. Down in the cellar sat three unopened wooden boxes, 221 years old. By taking the wine cellar apart, which is the first time it's been done maybe in 100 years, and going open the crates, one of the crates had Madeira wine from 1796. The 50-room Victorian home Home of New Jersey's first governor, William Livingston, and later the Kane family, was built in 1772, before the American Revolution. Thanks to the preserved labels, researchers were able to trace how the Madeira wine was shipped in from Portugal and rebottled in Philadelphia by a man named Robert Lennox. You can still read his name on the bottle. It was the, the drink of gentlemen. So he would have this wine that they would serve at the dinner table. Amazingly, you can see that the wax seal is unbroken, which may mean that this wine is still drinkable. Madeira is still drank today. It tastes pretty much like a sherry. It's a sweet dessert wine. The wine is owned by the museum and it's fate to be decided by the Kane family. It has not been decided if a bottle will be opened or who might get to take the first sip. Cheers, maybe. In Union, New Jersey, Meg Baker, CBS 2 News. Well, uh, I asked Mr. Kane if a bottle could be brought for this reception <laughs> so you guys can taste it. His answer was pretty straightforward. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, sorry kids, I tried. We also took performing arts programming to another level this year. World-class artists 
mentored our students and gave many of them the chance to share the stage with one of the best on Broadway. Let's take a look. For the people of Sandy World, I have to tell you. People of Sandy World, I have to tell No, I didn't think that I would ever be performing with Patty LaFleur. I'm like three weeks into freshman year. I'm kind of blown away, and I, I still, I'm like trying to chew the fact that I'm going to be up on stage with a legend. If you could have been there the night we announced that all of them were going to be able to do it, I, oh my gosh, it was magical. She's a Broadway legend, like come on now, she's like the Whitney Houston of Broadway. Now that I get to sing with her is just, it's like I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> the rehearsal process was amazing, she was extremely friendly, she talked to us like you know, person to person, not like she's a star. She was very humble. It was almost like a master class. Because, you know, as we were rehearsing, she just had so much, so many words of advice and so many things, and not even just about the concert in specific, but just advice as performers and actors and musical theater artists in general. And from great performance on stage to those on the field, let's take a moment to recognize our student athletes who are some of the greatest ambassadors for this university. Years ago, we chose to build world-class athletic facilities that are unrivaled in the region and in the state. We did it for many reasons, but the most important one was our students do deserve it. And if you have any doubt about our student at least commitment to the classroom, let me share this fact with you. This past academic year, student athletes earned the highest collective GPA in our school's history. And those big dreams for our athletes don't stop at Kane. This summer, Kane graduate and pitcher Kevin Herget is knocking on the door of the major leagues. Right now, he is pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals top minor league team and is hoping to get the call. You're in, Kevin. Give him a round of applause. There were years, about 10 ago, when our student life office was focused solely on programming and entertainment, not anymore. Today, the Center for Leadership and Service has garnered a spot on the Presidential Room of Honor for Community Service five years in a row. And the students and staff from this group of Kane students, hear this, have logged 52,000 hours of community service in the last academic year. And just for the mayor of Elizabeth, 20,000 hours to support the Elizabeth Public School. And just as you would expect, they're mobilizing to go to Houston and help. Thank you, Scott Snowden, and thank you, the students, for this amazing culture that you have created here at Kane. And Janice Murray Lowry is telling me that engaged students have a four year graduation rate double that of the university average. So get involved. We recently celebrated the 10-year anniversary of our partnership with Ocean County College in the creation of Kane Ocean. This fall, enrollment at Kane Ocean hit a five-year high of more than 1,600 students. This initiative allows us to hire dozens of the new faculty that you see here 
for the last five years from a source of income coming from Kane Ocean. Madam Chair, you remember how outraged some were when we began this project. Let me state that our students from community colleges are as gifted and as talented as any other Kane students. And their success stories are abound. OCC has the largest number of Star One students in the state of New Jersey, and we get most of them. We extended our reach by heading down south to the shore, and then we did it by going west to the highlands. This Vision 2020 initiative is under construction on schedule for the fall of 2018 classes. This unique $15 million facility set in the center of a 1,200 acre preserve will give our sustainability and environmental sciences students hands-on experience studying the ecosystem and the environmental concerns not available to any other university in the state of New Jersey. <clears throat> I always believed that given the opportunity, our students compete with the best and the brightest of any other university in the country, including the Ivies. When Andrea Arbizo was applying for an internship, her friend in the College of Business encouraged her to apply for a position in BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world. Andrea thought she didn't have a chance. After all, she was going up against students from Cornell, Princeton, and Harvard. But she took a shot. And she said, I got nothing to lose. And guess what happened? She got the internship and showed everyone at BlackRock what makes a Kane student so special. Hard work and incessant perseverance. This June, BlackRock offered Andrea a full-time position. There are many other stories about our business college. This summer, they reach a major milestone when their application for double ACSB accreditation process was accepted. It'll take many years to get this done, but it's a spectacular achievement for the college. Our global business program continues to provide opportunities for students to participate in the global economy. This summer, our students travel to Germany, Ireland, and China to help companies solve challenging logistic problems. When it comes to offering students a truly immersive global education, no university in the United States could compete with Kane USA. When you look at our campus in Wenzhou, China, and those of you who have been there, you can attest to that fact. Anyone who's been to Wenzhou, China, raise your hands. Oh, pretty many. Our dream of a full-scale American university in China is now a reality. What started as a conversation with Mr. Xi Jinping in 2006, now the president of China, is now a landmark multi-billion RMB initiative producing top-tier graduates. Now, let me give you this fact. The first 143 graduates of WKU posted a four-year graduation rate of 89%. 70%. 70% of them got accepted to some of the best graduate programs in the world including 20% at Kane USA. Others got job offers or created their own businesses. You can see where they weren't all over. Freshman enrollment at WKU is doubling each year. And the international interest continues to climb. Hundreds of students have now participated in this exciting educational exchange Together, they're erasing boundaries for higher education. 
and forging new pathways that didn't exist before. Do we have a little video for that? Hi, I'm Lee Jun Pan. I am the valedictorian from Wenzhou King University. Congratulations on your graduation, and I wish you good luck on your journey starting from King University. Bye! Hello graduates from Wenzhou King, my name is Jimmy Kim and I'm the valedictorian from King USA. Congratulations on your achievement and thank you for your congratulatory message. Your message was shared with everyone at our commencement and we are so proud to share this special moment in our lives with all of you. So here's our reply from 2,000 of your fellow graduates. We hope you enjoy and Gongxi Niemen! As I said, we have now achieved most of our Vision 2020 strategic plan objectives. And for this, we can be all proud. And thank you, Sue Buske, who heads our University Planning Council. <laughs> but despite all of that, we now face a world that is changing faster and more dramatically than ever before at warp speed. We must start to set a course for the decades that lie ahead now. With help from many of you in this room, we have done it before and we can do it again. We here at Kane created our own future rather than waiting for the future to dawn on us. Our graduates are entering a workforce that is far different than it was just a few years ago. Research tells us that the digital age revolution was as transformative as the invention of fire or the industrial revolution of the 20th century. Think just for a moment about the multi-billion dollar powerhouse companies today some of them didn't even exist a decade ago. Nobody had heard of Facebook, Google, Uber, Alibaba, Snapshot, Airbnb, and that crazy upstart called Amazon that started selling books online and now, and now you know what Amazon is doing? taken over the world. Two things are indisputably clear. Learning will never be the same, and globalization is a fact of life. No one can stop either one of the two. If we in higher education do not adapt to this changing environment, my colleagues, we will become as obsolete as blockbuster, Borders in Encyclopedia Britannica. By 2030, more than 60% of the new jobs will be in industries that do not exist today. If that is the case, we need to change and change big time. We cannot teach obsolete material and we cannot deliver information to students the old fashioned way. By the time you write down a concept on the blackboard, they have already Googled it. We must adapt. We must think ahead. We must give the students the skills they need in critical thinking, writing, analytics, and problem solving. And that is not only the job of general education. 
It's the job of every one of us in every classroom. Now let me tell you something straight out. This transformation will not be easy. Asking people to change something they have been comfortable with for a long time generates resistance and sometimes conflict. But as Nelson Mandela said once, it always seems impossible until it's done. If we're honest with ourselves and embrace this digital age, we can get it done. And we need to start now, like yesterday. We must begin by creating at least a dozen new career-focused programs at Kane. We did it with the quality, qualitatively superior programs I just mentioned, and we can do it again. We now have programs that are envy of our peers, and we could create career-focused programs that will become their envy one more time. I've already have a green light to the provost to create progr baccalaureate programs in community health, therapeutic recreation, strategic advertising, global studies, forensic science, and a master's degree in genetic counseling and a doctorate in occupational therapy. We must move, and we must move now. Most of these programs should be available to enrollment services for the start in the fall of 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, we must drastically transform our curriculum from descriptive text to analytical structures that shape our students' ability to solve problems. Our students will likely change careers a minimum of three times. And we must give them the skills needed to adapt to those changes. We must transform our research and learning support information delivery system to primarily digital media. The world has gone digital. Our students have gone digital. We must do the same. There is no choice here. And we must ensure that our academic advisement system is fully verifiable. And every student has a full-time academic advisor and a faculty member. We now, <coughs> excuse me, have a full complement of faculty. There is no excuse for delay any longer. None. By 2020, we must be a university where the students get an internship in a viable placement place when they ask for it. We must put our students into the workforce that they aspire to be part of. It is the only way to prepare them for a successful career. Beginning spring of 2018, only courses that have been significantly updated or the curricula that are fully revised in the past three years will be scheduled in desirable time slots. In fall of 2018, those courses which have not been fully revised in the past five years will not be offered at all. Every program must look to the success of other public universities similar to us, such as North Carolina State, Arizona State, UC Irvine, New Mexico State, and many others, to see how their successes could be replicated here at K. We must learn from our colleagues. We must put our full energy into this. Just look at the peers who did not transform themselves and where they are now. To support this work and to help all of us get this done. I'm not asking you to do all of that overtime for nothing. I will ask the Board of Trustees to invest $2 million in these initiatives this academic year alone. Many trustees are here today. I have no doubt that they share my urgency and understand the importance of moving these initiatives forward. 
we will rise to this challenge together. And we will succeed together. Ladies and gentlemen, it is great to see you here today. And it's great to see you back on campus. And I count on your support and hard work to implement these initiatives. Together, we can get the job done, and we will. Thank you, and have a terrific, terrific day. Thank you.